from the breaking of the dawn to the setting of the sun. I will stand on every promise of your word. Very good morning to you and welcome to the service on the 22nd of May. Uh, we're deep into the Easter season. In fact, it's, it's almost coming to an end. And uh, so I thought I'd just let you know that uh, on the 26th of May, in other words, on uh, this coming Thursday, it's Ascension Day. And so we celebrate the Ascension as Christians. It's an important calendar event for us. And so at 10 o'clock in the morning, we'll be having a service in the church. Uh, unfortunately, we can't broadcast one on that day, but uh, do feel free to come along to church 10 a.m. for the Ascension Day celebration. We start with an opening prayer, but before I continue, I'd like to let you know that you're going to hear a lot of my voice today, simply because um, I need to be away uh, to go and attend to a, 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 an important family matter, and so this is an early pre-recording uh, because I'm only going to get back, well, I won't be back in time to, to gather the troops, so to speak. But I do hope that you can enjoy this service with me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you promised to make all things new. As we celebrate your broader vision of a new Jerusalem, the holy city, Help us to embrace how high, wide, and deep your love for us is. Bless our worship this morning, so that you will go, we will go into the world and our circles of influence and truly make a difference. In your name and to your glory we pray. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul.
focus now on a moment of confession. This is something we need to do regularly as the people of God. Holy God, you delighted in creating us and declared us good, yet we have turned from your goodness and sought after our own will. Lord, have mercy. Holy Jesus, in your love for the world, you came to earth died on the cross and rose to life again. You won us victory over death and darkness. Yet time and again we fall back into sin and make a mockery of your saving grace. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you sanctify the church and empower us to be bold witnesses of Christ in the world. Yet time and again we fail to bring about change, to care for your world and for creation. Lord, have mercy. And so we take a moment of quiet to reflect on our sins and to bring them before our Lord. So may the almighty and loving God who has promised forgiveness to all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, free us from our sins, and give us eternal life. Amen. We now have our first reading, which is taken from Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 to 5, right at the end of the Bible. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Hear the word of the Lord. you 
Our second reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 13 to 29. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I remember when I was at primary school, our history teacher asked us, what does heaven look like? And we all came up with pious visions. They all involved angels and all sorts of things, playing harps and the like. But one chap sort of nailed it for me. He said, unlimited condensed milk. So I ask you, what does heaven look like? John's vision, the revelation that occupies the very last pages of our Bibles, has many interpreters. And I want to stress from the outset that this is a vision and not necessarily a literal image. We make a huge mistake when we get too literal. Because firstly, we forget the meaning then of what is being said and we start focusing on things that are just on the surface. God is revealing important truths about his nature and his intention for salvation through this vision that he gave to John. Who knows? There may yet be space for condensed milk in heaven. We know that while there will be trials and tribulations and great affliction, afflictions at the close of the age, that God will win over them and Christ will reign triumphant. This is one of the principles of the vision and not so much uh, one of the literal interpretations. But that's there. Another one is we know that sin and death will be no more and that Christ's glory will light up the universe and his love will light up every heart says there in Revelation 22, there'll be no need for a lamp because God himself will give us the light. We also know that the faithful will drink of the water of the river of life and that there'll be nothing accursed anymore. And this image that I love, that he will wipe away every tear from our eyes. And we know from last week's reading in Revelation 21 that God himself will be present with his people. Now, it's not to suggest he's not present. We'll talk about that in a moment. But there will be a physical presence of God and that all nations will bow down before him. Yes, South Africa, Russia, Ukraine. I also find it profound and bear with me here, that the vision of heaven in Revelation has a new Jerusalem come down and God lives amongst his people. It's not a place in the sky that we go to, but it is God's reign established right here on earth. Is there a message in here for us? Very often Christians focus on this promise and get bogged down and forget that there is still life to be lived in the here and now. What I mean by this promise is this promise of a future, of heaven. But there's life in the here and now still. In fact, our eternal life has started. We're living it already. 
The reward of heaven is a wonderful promise that should be inspiring and appreciated, but it shouldn't be all that motivates us in our Christian walks. Jesus reminds his disciples at the Last Supper in the upper room that they are in the world but not of it. They are different in some way. And though he seems to speak in code because he's very good at uh, coming at us with all sorts of conundrums, he is stressing something that is very, very important. Disciples, including us, are different from the majority of the people around us. Because you and I are also his disciples. And we're also called to be not of this world, but in it. So let's unpack this just a little bit. John 14 comes just after, wait for it, John 13. Yes, it's obvious. But I'm saying this to emphasize that we can't take snippets of Scripture and just focus on them. There's a unity in what is presented to us. John 13 to John 17 are part of a section, really, and they all describe a single event, really. Jesus' last hours in the upper room with his disciples. We take, tend to take them in chunks and break them up. But there's a broader picture what, to what Jesus is doing here. Now, in John 13, Jesus washes his disciples' feet, and he predicts that he'll be betrayed and denied. These are the things that we draw from, from John 13. And then he talks about how he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the path to God. He is the truth, and he is the way to eternal life. And only after this do we get to today's reading. So today's reading takes place in the context of those things. That have gone before. From these passages we find a few ways in which Jesus' disciples are different from the world. And so he's laid the ground and he's trying to tell them you actually aren't of this world, you're in it, you're different. But he's already started to tell them how they are different and he's speaking to you and I as well. How are we different? Well, the first thing we can draw from that is that they are called to serve others. Yes, the foot washing highlights this. Yeah, we're the master. In fact, the Lord of all washes the feet of his disciples. An act of absolute servitude. In fact, a slave would do that. There's an implied humility here as well that his disciples are being called to be humble before the world and before God. The world is a self-serving place. It's dog-eat-dog dog out there. In fact, the news has just broken that something like $200 billion has been lost to the cryptocurrency market. It's people looking after themselves, buying, selling, and the like, wheeling and dealing. But we're called to be servants. We're called to serve one another and our communities. It's written in the 23rd verse, Jesus has promised to us that if we love him and show that our love for him is real, by keeping his word, that both he and the Father will come to us and live in us. That they will make their home in us. And that's the second way in which we're different. So we're called to be servants, but we have God living in us. God will not only dwell in our temples, our churches. Uh, Christ will not only be present where two or three are gathered in his name, but God will dwell within us. Christ will make his home in us. And in fact, this links very closely with the third way in which we're different. And that is that, as in today's Gospel reading, Jesus gives us the Advocate, the Holy Spirit. 
That word is very interesting. Uh, parakletos is the word in Greek. And it can be translated as advocate. It can be translated as helper. So Jesus sends us the helper or the advocate. What does an advocate do for you? He pleads your case before a judge. The helper is somebody who, who walks you through something that is tricky. And life can be so immensely tricky. Let's face it. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything, Jesus promises, and will remind you of all that I have said to you. So yes, sometimes I'm battling with something and a word just comes to me from Scripture. It is a reminder of what Jesus has taught. And that is the Holy Spirit working in my life and teaching me and reminding me of what Jesus has taught. The Spirit convicts us as well, leads us and teaches us. And, you know, when Jesus was preparing for his eventual departure, he promises this to his bewildered and scared disciples. He tells them about this advocate, this paraclete, the Holy Spirit. And he tells these very frightened disciples that they'll be fine, all will be well. He will be with them in spirit. And of course, in a few weeks' time, we will celebrate the occasion when the Spirit comes in power. So I don't want to spoil any of the topics for that day. But perhaps today is just a little bit of a ramble, a reminder that as we reflect on heaven and the wonderful promises of God, let's remember that it is here that he chooses to establish his kingdom. Remember the new Jerusalem comes down from heaven to this world. God comes and lives among the people. We are called to make it a reality as his disciples, at least in part, in the here and now. We may not be of this world, but we are in it for a reason. Called to establish heaven here on earth. And we start this by serving others. By inviting Jesus to live in us. And by following the lead of his advocate of the Holy Spirit, who is God with us. Let these words encourage you. Amen.
Let us then pray. Gracious God, we offer our prayers for the world around us. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would be felt and heard by lukewarm hearts in our village, that you would stir within and inspire revived worship. We pray for the drought in our area, the taps that are running dry, and on bended knee, repent of our own wrongdoings, and attitude of not doings. We praise you for all things you give and ask that the rains would come to fill our dams. Bring us water, we pray, Lord. We pray for those whose struggle is overwhelming, for the peoples up north in the wall. And we pray for an end to the hostility and a withdrawal of Russia from Ukraine. We pray for the sick who need hospitals and medical care, all the homeless, the fearful, and those without hope. Father, we can help them with prayer from where we are. You are the creator, the healer, and the way maker. So we lift them to you. And we pray for all who suffer this day, whether physically, emotionally, or spiritually. May your presence surround and sustain each one so that they may know your love Heavenly Father, we pray for ourselves, members of your body here on earth. Help us to see your presence burning in the hearts of others and grant that we may be united in a fellowship of love and prayer. Break down the barriers that divide us from one another. Unite us in our common allegiance to you as Lord and Saviour. And may we be clothed with compassion and humility as individuals and in our relationships. And we pray, Lord, that you would open our hearts, that we would invite you in, that we would accept your advocate that you, we would accept the Holy Spirit as our teacher and guide and that we would heed the call to serve our communities and serve one another. Help us to be ready to see and accept as you release the gifts you have given to each one of us so that in us and through us your kingdom might come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So thank you so much for joining us this morning and I do hope that you have a wonderful week ahead. Remember there is a service on the 26th Thursday at 10, 10 o'clock in the morning for Ascension Day. Feel free to join us there but in the meantime, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. And so have a fantastic week and I hope to see you again next week. We'll be playing out now with every promise. From the breaking of the dawn to the setting of the sun, I will stand on every promise of your word. Words of power strong to say that will never pass away. I will stand on every promise of your word. For your covenant is sure, and on this I am secure. I can stand on every promise of your word. When I 
Every promise of 